Hey everybody, thanks for watching the channel. Let's talk about the Sheeran Looper X. My name is Chris and I am a professional loop artist. I'd say 90% of my income comes from doing solo looping shows. Um, so I was really excited to see that this came out a few weeks ago and thought, wow, gotta check it out. So I got my hands on this one and um, I like it, but let's be honest about it. Um, there's some things that are kind of weird about it. They've gotten scratched in my head. I'm not sure if this is the workflow that I really want to do. And I've been watching a lot of videos and I haven't seen a lot of instruction on how the actual workflow goes. So I'm gonna take you through all the modes and show you how many button presses it takes and some things that just don't make a lot of sense to me. It might work for you, it definitely works for Ed, but I'm not sure it's gonna work for me. So let's uh, check it out. Man, it is massive, it is huge. And that's a good thing for me because the pedals are so easy to hit, you never miss them, and they feel great. They're, they're pretty silent, they feel great under your feet, and, um, but it comes with a little bit of a heft to it. It's super solid, so I know that this is gonna last and not get really dinged up, but it is about 15 pounds, so it is a little heavy to carry, and it is big, so you need a pretty big case for it if you wanna do that. Um, so, looking at the back, so there are quite a bunch of inputs and outputs. We get four inputs that are both XLR and quarter inch, and four outputs. Two of them are XLR, and two of them are quarter inch TRS, I believe. Um, there's MIDI in and out. There's an expression pedal. Um, there is a USB. And the USB is cool because you can record with this straight out to your computer. And this other USB can power like a MIDI controller, or it can actually power your iPhone if you need that, if you need to charge your iPhone during a gig. Or if you maybe have a set list with an iPad, that would be really helpful. Um, and then the power button and a little thing to keep it from getting unplugged, which is pretty cool. Okay, we're all set up, and I should mention that I haven't been paid to do this review. I'm just a very curious person that wants to improve my rig all the time, and I thought maybe this would be something that would enhance my gigs. So I really wanted to get my hands on it and really check it out. Um, and again, there's some great things about it, but there's also some things that leave me scratching my head, like what were they thinking? So we'll get into all that, the effects, the modes, everything. Um, and also, I'm, there's a lot of features that this thing does have that I'm not gonna show today because I'm a live looper and that's what I'm interested in and if you're watching this I hope that's what you're interested in. Um, there's a lot of features like backing tracks and saving loops and things but for me I like to improvise, I like to build a loop from scratch and so that's what we're going to talk about today. Alright, let's fire it up. Here we go. Okay, so I've got my Cole Clark Angel guitar, which is an amazing guitar. It's a two output guitar because it's got a humbucker in it. So I use that for electric sounds and acoustic sounds looping, which is really great. I've got a Nord over here for just piano and organ sounds. And I'm actually powering the effects for the guitar through a quad cortex over here. Um, and I'll explain that a little later. And then we'll go into the effects that are in the looper board itself. Uh, but here we go. All right, the main thing I would say that makes this looper kind of different than any of the other ones I've tried, and this is kind of a double-edged sword because there's some good things about it, but overall I feel like it's something that's missing from the Looper X, is the concept of stopping individual tracks can't be done on this looper. If I'm on track two and I have track one playing, I can only mute one of the tracks or stop them both at the same time. I can't stop a track while the other one's playing, only mute that. And I'll show you why that's sometimes maybe a cool thing, but other times it's a real problem. Th this is the first thing you're going to see, and this is the multi-mode. Um, this is the mode that Ed Sheeran uses, and in this mode you can have four tracks all playing at the same time, and they all have to be the same length. It's not a mode I would use, but for his music, and no disrespect to Ed Sheeran, I think his music's great, I like a lot of his songs, but the structure of his songs are usually 
a chord progression that never changes. He might build on that chord progression for a bigger chorus or a bridge or something or take it down for the bridge. But the structure is, as far as the chord progression never changes. So a mode like this would be good, but it's also very limiting if you're gonna do any sort of other kind of song. So let me show you how it works. Here are our track buttons, and you'll notice that track one, two, three, and four are at the top here. And if I change any of these, you'll see that it corresponds to what track I'm on. This is on my play and record. So if I want to put down like an acoustic percussion track, it might go like this. So you see that when I pushed it again to end the loop, it went right into overdub mode, which can be cool. But if you don't want that to happen, you can change that in the settings, and I'll show you how to do that. Now to get to my next track, I have to hit the track 2 button, otherwise I'd be overdubbing on track 1 again. And when I'm ready at the end of this, I can come in with my next loop. And you'll see what just happened there. I wanted to play something longer than the original loop, and I couldn't do it because this is multi-mode. So, if I want to play a four bar progression, I have to play a four bar percussive loop. So let's do that again. And by the way, to clear all that, you can either hold down the stop button, and it'll take like three seconds, and it'll be cleared. Or you can go into the function button, and then you'll see that all these buttons do a, a secondary function, and I can say clear all, and it'll clear it. So now I have to do a four bar progression with my percussion if I want to do that. So now I have four bars so I can do this. tracks playing. If I hit this again, they're all going to play. And I'll have to stop it, and they all stop. So the stop button's up really a stop all. So what Ed would do in this mode, and what this looper is designed to do, is you hit the mode button, and now all my tracks can be muted or unmuted at any given time. So if I play all the tracks, time I can mute that track 4 that had that B flat going, that sort of mixolydian thing. I can mute this one, and I can even mute my main progression at any time, and now they're all muted. So when I hit the stop button, they will reset, but if I want these all to play again, I have to hit them before I hit play. If I hit if I hit stop now and 
hit play again, none of these tracks will play because they're muted. Only that track will play. If I put this one in and stop it, only those two tracks will play. So what you'll see Ed Sheeran do a lot is he might have all four tracks playing for a chorus. He'll break it down to one. And that might be his verse. And then he come in with a chorus. pretty cool. The only problem I'm having with that, first of all, is that you have to keep everything the same length, which I don't love, so I wouldn't use this mode very much. But the other thing is, say I'm down to just track one and track two playing, and I want to make a stop. So maybe there's a stop in the song or something. So I'm playing. And then I want to get track three and four playing. Well, most loopers have like a start all. This one won't do that because you have to be ready to unmute both of these tracks. So let me show you what something, and I've seen, you know, the videos where it does this and it looks like a lot of tap dancing when really most loopers just have something that's a stop all, start all, and that's like two button presses instead of like four button presses. So if I'm playing and I do a stop and then I want three and four to come in, watch what my feet have to do. Too bad because the tempo is kind of slow and I had time to hit each one but when you're playing live and it's a faster tempo and you're doing other things that can be a problem I would much rather see it have like a stop all and then maybe the when you push the stop button again it unmutes all the tracks and starts them all again because the stop pedal doesn't really do anything on a second press so that's something that I would request is to change that so you could turn off the clear all on the stop and just make it an unmute and start all um, button. There's one little shortcut that I've seen people like Ed do, which is to, once you're in record mode, if you don't take it out of record mode, hitting any of these tracks will start recording the loop on that track as well. That way you can build up a loop really fast, and that's actually a cool part of this looper X. So let me show you what I mean. I'll record a percussive part and then I'll just build on it really quick by keeping it in record mode and not taking it out. track really fast. You don't have to take the first track that you recorded out of record, then arm the next track and hit record again. You can do it that way, and that's the way the manual says to do it, but watching Ed's feet and some other people I've seen on YouTube, that's sort of the shortcut to building a track really fast. Don't take it out of record. So I wouldn't use multi-mode because I like to be able to set a short percussion loop and then be able to play however long I want a chord progression, and then maybe I want a little embellishment over that and I want that to be shorter. So I like the freedom of doing that. And that's called sync mode. So you can get to that by holding down the mode button. And then you can see at the top, I'm in multi right now, I can change to sync. Okay, we're in sync mode. Also what I wanna show you is we've been looking at it in Ed's preferred view, which is to see each track is sort of like a VU meter showing you how much is playing. Um, that's kind of cool, but I like being in, and by doing that, all I did was push this at the top, change it to waveform view. 
And that you're going to see, like kind of like Pro Tools or any DAW, you're going to see waveform mode. All right, so now we're in sync mode. And the only difference between this and multi is you can have different lengths of audio for each track. And that's what I would usually live in. That's kind of like I'm playing a gig and I have a verse that I've looped, but I don't want to take the time to loop the chorus because it's just going to take too long. So I will turn off the verse and then go to the chorus, just play that live. And when I'm ready to solo over a verse chord or something like that, I'll bring that back in. So I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to start with a percussion track and maybe it'll be like a bar or two bars. Okay, so I have that going. And now I'm just gonna do a pretty common progression and you might recognize the song, but it'll be a little different. So I'm now on track two and this will be my main verse chord. it went right into overdub mode and like I said you can change that so it goes right into play but there is a good advantage to having it in overdub mode is you can move right on to the next thing you want to do but anyways that's all I want for this I'm gonna go to track three and I'm gonna just do a little um, thing over it like that I might bring in or out Because we're not stopping the tracks, we're only muting them, they continue to go. So now, that progression was kind of fast car. So, and I play that a lot. And this is the problem I come in with this kind of muting and not stopping a track, which I'm not used to. I'm not sure I like this workflow. Is, okay, I'm doing one bar of a percussion loop, and that four bars of a verse keeps going. And when I stop it, it's not really being stopped, it's just being muted. So it continues to go and keeps recycling. Now, a song like Fast Car, at the end of the chorus, there's an extra two or one bar, extra bar. So it's like nine bars instead of eight bars. The problem is, is if I get to the end of that chorus and I unmute that track, it's in the wrong spot. And that's really frustrating. So I'll give you an example of that. So. These are muted. Well, actually, we'll do that one's here. And here's the verse. I'm going to mute this for the chorus. spot. It was halfway through the verse when I started. So that 
can be a real problem. The only workaround to that is if you stop all, because that will reset the track, and then unmute it while it's stopped. So I'll give you an example of that. stop all, unmute, and then hit play. So that's stop, unmute, play. So that's three button pushes for something that usually would take two in my looper, and also it would be on the same pedal. So I wouldn't have to really look or think about it. I would just hit stop, and then start all, and it would go. That's another that's thing that's kind of frustrating with this, is I'm used to stopping and then starting from the same pedal. Now I've done a gig with this and I stop and I hit the same pedal again and nothing happens because stop only stops. Um, so you have to stop and then hit play. So that is a big problem for me. I don't like that concept um, of only being able to mute. I'd like to be able to start and stop individual tracks and I would like to be able to do that ahead of time. So as it's playing and I want something to come in at the end of or start at the beginning of the percussion track I can hit that early and it'll wait until it comes in. That's how I'd prefer to do it and that would be something that I would request with this board. It's not something that's a well it is kind of a deal breaker but I've been able to work around that and change my workflow but it's not ideal for me. I don't understand why you couldn't be able to just choose to stop it instead. Um, and again, maybe just having the option of doing a stop and then start all would really be helpful. Um, so that's sync mode. Not a, not a deal breaker, but kind of frustrating. Okay, now here's the real deal breaker on the pedal for me, is when you go to band mode. So this is where you would have a percussion loop playing all the time and you want to switch between song sections. So a verse and a chorus that are both recorded. So let's go to, first we're going to clear all this, let's hold down the mode button, and we're going to go to band mode. Now, so the first track, or whatever track you want to make your primary track, is going to stay the same length and always play. The other tracks can kind of switch between each other. Okay, so you could have a verse and a chorus. I'll just keep this real simple, and we'll just do like a minor one to a minor four, and I'll show you where the problem is. So I'm going to do my, my loop, my percussion loop. I'm just going to go F sharp minor to B minor. Here's my first loop on track two. loopers that I've used, like say the Boomerang or Loopy Pro or some of the other ones, it would just be playing one section and you'd hit the button for the other section that you want to start at the end of, say, so if I were playing the verse, I would hit the chorus track and at the end of the verse track, it would just automatically start playing the chorus. That doesn't happen with this and this is where there's like way too many button pushes for this to be sort of feasible live. So if I'm on track three, well let's say let's say I'm on track two and we play. Now to get to track three, I don't just hit track three and it'll automatically go. I have to arm it. So 
precise with this because if I do that in the middle, say I'm in the middle of this and I want to go over, it goes right to the top of the other one and can sound kind of disjointed. So you have to really be on beat one with this. To me that's not really feasible because you have two extra button pr presses or maybe just one extra button press but still live that's too much to be thinking about I want it to be playing from say track one and all I have to do is hit this once and at the end of this loop it will switch but it won't you have to wait till the bar and hit play so it's an extra button push that I don't want to do live. And I think that should be something that's a request in the features. Um, then the other problem is, so let's say that I have a bridge and I don't want to record it because live, I don't want to waste people's time, I want to get right to the song. So I don't need to play the bridge and record it, I just want to play it because it only happens once, I'm not going to need it again. So I just want to stop both those tracks and just play the bridge. Well that's really complicated because now let's say this one's playing, I have to go into mode, mute mode, and mute it. Then, if I want it to play again, I have to unmute it, then get back out of it, hit track three, if I want to switch to that. I'll give you an example of that. So here's track two playing. Track three. I had to go into mode to mute it. Now I'm going to get out of this. If I want to go back to this F sharp minor, I have to hit it. See, I'm sorry, messing me up. And then I have to hit it again. Now don't forget, you muted track three. So now you gotta go back into mode, unmute it, so it'll work again when you're ready for it. So I hope that explains and kind of demonstrates how frustrating that can be. It's not a simple one button press, it's quite a few button presses, especially if you want to stop both of those tracks and get into a, a different section for just a second. So many button presses, very complicated, not really suited for live use at all. I don't play a lot of songs that would be in band mode, but enough that this would be a deal breaker because, in fact, the other night, uh, one of the guys I was playing with was like, let's do this song, and I knew it was going to have to be in band mode, and I just said, nah. I'll mess it up because there's just too many button presses. Um, so that's something I hope they address in future updates. Now the other modes that this has are song mode and free mode and honestly I wouldn't use them very much. Uh, free mode, all of them, all the tracks will be free at any length. They won't sync up. So it's more of like a textural effect. Something I wouldn't use very often, if ever. And so we won't really go into that one. And then the other one is song mode, where each track is independent, but synced up. Um, the problem with that is, now you don't have a backing track. You don't have like a percussive loop. And so it's really hard to stay synced up with that. So it's not something I would use very often. Okay, now let's talk about effects on the unit. It was kind of like a cool concept that I thought maybe this thing would have everything built into it and I wouldn't need to bring another effects processor. I used a Quad Cortex for my guitar. This is the uh, Colt Clark guitar. And um, the reason I do is it's got two outputs. One's for the humbucker and one is for the acoustic uh, pickups. And that way, in the Quad Cortex, I have a couple of different inputs and I can hit a button, change it from an electric sound to an acoustic sound real easy. Um, and I thought, well, that'd be really cool to do with the Looper X, but the effects, there's one useful way of doing this, but other than that, it's kind of useless because you cannot apply an effect 
to your input. So just my guitar or just my keyboard or just my vocals. It has to be put on a track, one of these tracks. And so once you do that, everything that's going through that track is going to have the same effect on it. So my guitar, my keyboard, my vocals will all have that. So if I put in an octave effect on my guitar, the keyboard will have it too if I'm on that track with it. The vocal will have it on that track. So there's ways to work around that, but it seems insane to me that you can't put the effects right on the inputs so that only the guitar has that effect no matter what. Um, so I'll show you some workarounds for that and the one way this might be kind of cool. So in the settings here, I can go into the effects, here's the button, and I can assign to each track what effect it will have on it. So for my example, I'll just show you that you could have, I'm going to leave these two by themselves. I will add an effect to track three. And there's a couple different sort of effect racks that they have. I'm just going to use Ed's rack. And I'm going to go to the octave pedal. I'm going to turn that on. So now my guitar should sound like this. You get an octave effect. So I'll say that's fine and leave it. Now on this one, I will put a delay on. And I've got it set for a, a dotted eighth note. I'm going to bring the feedback up and the mix up a little bit. And now, and the cool thing is with the delays and everything, they do stay in time with what you're doing. So. Okay, so the delay is there. And now, let's get out of the effects. Alright, so I have an octave pedal on track 3, and I have a delay pedal on track 4. So, here's where it could be useful, is if I don't want to, if, let's say I'm doing sort of a U2-ish song, okay, and I'm going to go percussive loop. there was every time I switched to another track the effect was instantly applied so that can be very useful if you have a specific song where I know that I'm going to do a percussive loop with the guitar then I'm going to play the chords and when I switch to the next track automatically I have a bass sound going right not there so without having to change effects or anything hitting track 3, you'll get the bass sound. And if I hit track 4, immediately I have the delay sound. So that's really useful if you have a specific song where you want to set up effects. Then you don't even have to think about changing effects. They happen as you progress through the song. The only problem with that is now you're going to have to have different presets for every song that, oh, I want you know, a delay on this part. That's not going to work for the next song you play. So you would have to have like a bunch of preset uh, loops ready to go, um, which could kind of take you out of the flow of the gig. Um, I don't like to do it like that because I kind of just improvise and do whatever song I feel like I want to do next. I don't want to be searching for like a preset for that. There might be a few songs where maybe that would come in really handy, like a U2 song or something like that. Um, but for the most part, I like to improvise what effects I'm using, especially if I'm soloing over something, I might want to use a wah sound one night, and then the next night I might not want that. I might want to do like a sort of a 
AC30 kind of sound, or maybe I want to play the, the solo acoustic. So it changes from night to night, and when you're locked in with this, it's not really going to work for me. It might work for you, and if it does, that's great. Um, like I said, it would just be great if they had the option to say, I want this on the track, or I want this on the input. Um, and there is ways that you can toggle the effects on and off. So for example, I can go into the function button, and here's the effects button, and now I can turn off the octave effect and the delay effect. Only problem is, while you're playing, that's a lot of button pushes. Then get out, now it's not applied, but I want it back. Okay, effects. So that was three button pushes, plus fourth to get out of it. You can do that with MIDI. You can hook up a controller, and there are MIDI assignments for toggling on effects for track one, two, three, four. So that would make it easier. But just in the board itself, it would take like four button presses to get that effect toggled on and off, which is kind of too much when you're playing live. Okay, so that's basically the way I would use the looper. Um, there are some great things about it. This is what I think is great about the looper. Um, the pedals feel great. It's nice and big, easy to hit. You're probably not going to miss them. I like how sturdy the looper is. I think that it's um, a good size so that it's not too big that you can't really carry it around. It's kind of a cool um, looking looper as well. It's really easy to set your inputs and uh, you know just set the gain real quick. Um, it's kind of if you want to use the effects the way they are, it is an all-in-one unit that you could just take to a gig, and it's easy like that. All right, what don't I like about the looper? First of all, I don't like the whole concept that you can't stop an individual track. I've shown you how just muting them can throw you way off. If, it, if you have an extra bar in the chorus or something like that, then the loop keeps playing, and now you're out of sync with it. So I'd much rather see them do something where they change that feature so you can choose whether it mutes or stops and then starts over when you hit play again. Um, like I said, that, that could be worked around if you stop the song in the middle and then unmute and then hit play. But that's a lot of button pushes. And you'll see if you watch Ed Sheeran do it or anybody else that's demoed this looper that you're tap dancing most of the time to get everything to come in and out. I would really, what I would change is change the stop button to on that second press, unmute all the tracks, and play at the same time. That would just be one button press to stop it and one button press to start playing everything. Other things I'd change, definitely the band mode. Way too many button pushes. They should look at something like a boomerang looper, or I don't have a lot of experience with the boss loopers, but I'm sure there's a way. Um, where once you have a verse and a chorus, it would only take one button press to get to the other section. This whole thing where you have to do two button presses while I'm changing effects maybe, or I'm singing and playing, that's too much to think about. So I hope in a future update they can kind of address that. And then um, the other thing I would change is the effects on the input instead of just on the track. Give me the option to have effects that only apply to that one instrument on that one input. And that way I can improvise, I can say what I want, and maybe have that MIDI um, assignable and with presets so that if I want an acoustic guitar with a little delay, I can hit a MIDI controller and do that. If I want a, a bass sound, I can do that and have that, those presets ready so it's all on that input. Okay, so those are my thoughts on the Sheeran Looper X. Uh, I hope you found this video useful. If you like it, please like and subscribe. Really help me out. And um, yeah, I don't know. Let me know, if, let me know if this is something that would work in your workflow or something that is just not ready for prime time yet. For me, I think I could find workarounds for it, but at the same time, should I do that yet or wait for future updates because Right now, I don't think that it's going to work in my workflow. I think that it's too many button pushes and too many things that don't really make sense as far as effects and changing, you know, sections of a song. Things that I don't want to think about too much when I'm doing a gig. I just want it to be nice and easy and not have to put a lot of thought into that. 
Also, check out some of the videos I've done with performances of the Looper X so you can see um, how my feet are working. I have a camera on the Looper as well as um, myself and just see how the workflow happens and maybe you'll find that that's exactly what you're looking for or maybe you'll find like me that it's a lot of button pushes and it might take you out of the live performance. All right, thanks for watching. See you again soon.